All right, this is the boat that we're gonna do. This is the old canvas that's on there. It's a Grady White with a T-top on it. And we're gonna put three sides, front and both sides on there with actual U-zips in there. So I'm gonna go in there and uh, strip the stuff off and then we'll start patterning this. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is take our transfer tape tape where the awning rail is, all the way around it, And then also take the snap line. Kind of the fabric here is going to come from the outside of this rail where the snap line is and then here we're going to jump to the inside and you can see these snap buttons here on the inside so there will be a little bit of a transition from here from the outside back to the inside. Alright, we'll start with the front curtain. So we'll peel our transfer tape off the awning rail up here at the top. Now I've pre-cut these, this plastic, and it was about six foot by 30 inches. Same thing with the two sides. I just pre-cut out enough there to make it so I'm going to find the center of this piece. I'm going to run up here to the center of the boat. Stick it on. off that tape and then do the same thing here. Use. Just pull it out nice and flat. Stick it on. Maybe you have corns like this if you put some relief cuts in there or let it lay down. And then I'll pull the entire bottom edge out both sides. Now we'll go back into the inside and tighten and push it up on the top. I know it's difficult to see here, it won't be. <clears throat> we put a little dot right on the on the tape itself. Relieve this corner so it will lay around the corner. And then put this, put our cutoff mark right to that dot. Find yourself a reference point. Oh, right here at the bottom, where you put a little dot. So that I can put the side curtain on and then mark the exact same dot so that both pieces line up. We'll do the same thing up there at the top. I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to draw a line right at the bottom of the aluminum edge. And then I'll also put some dots where the snaps are simply for just reference, not that we'll use those at all. And then I'm going to put a line right here in the center of the windshield too because we're going to break this into two panels with two U-zips, one on both sides. Same 
thing over here to straw this. Right? Okay. There's a little black rubber at the bottom of the windshield. That's actually where I want the canvas to go to. Mark your snaps. And then put a dot at your cutoff mark there. And we'll go to the inside and do that. Right, this instrument panel's on the in the way a little bit to see exactly what I'm doing. But remember that we want to identify that because we're going to split this into two pieces, marking both pieces that this is the inside of the canvas. Now I'm going to do the same thing, except there's a piece of awning rail track up here. And I'm just going to draw a line straight through the track. Very simple to do this. And then I put a little hash mark right where the awning rail stops, and then a cutoff mark right in between where the two pieces of awning rail come together. I'll put a cutoff mark right in between the two, where I know where I'm going to put my vertical zipper to connect the sides. And that is it. And that's exactly how you mark out for this very basic front curtain. So we'll strip it off of here. Now you notice that we can we can go ahead and take this we can go ahead and take the front piece off because we have a reference mark up here at the top and down here at the bottom where the front curtain uh, stopped. So now when we put the side piece up, we just mark those two exact same points and you can line it up. They'll be exactly right. So now that we have the tape already up here, we'll just jump right into the side. You've heard me say this before, it's actually cold outside this tape. Sometimes it becomes a little bare. It snowed about three inches yesterday. Okay. side pieces, and I did cut this at an angle, alright, so this is what I've identified as the top. That's what I was saying about being cold. Alright, stick it on there. We'll get it straight, and then we'll come to the outside and pull that, that straight down. Right in the center, I'm going to pull it down, and then just push it straight up. Okay, here's where I was talking about where this is going to come and jump to the inside. So what I need to do is take my scissors and just relieve this right to the gunnel there and then I can push the rest of it down to the inside. Just like that. And that will come in. Mark these two buttons and then indicate with some lines there so you don't get yourself confused where the canvas is going to go, where the cutoff mark is. And the same thing up here at the top, I'm going to put a mark at the stop of the railing and where I want the canvas to be cut off.
and then right in the track, draw a line. Mark the edge of the tracking, and then mark where the cutoff mark is. Now I'm going to mark the same thing on the outside as I did the front with the snap line. And again, like I keep saying, I can't decide, emphasize enough, this is the inside port. And that's done. Not that easy. Just for a tip. You want to take this tape off while you can. If it gets into the sun, it will stick and you it's very impossible to take off. Okay. Take it out here. Right in the middle. Pulling it out flat. Two snaps on the inside and your cut mark. Loop through to the top, mark the edges of the awning rail. And cut off off there at the top and then scribing right inside that track of the awning rail. This is the inside star. Here on this piece, what I'll do is I'm just going to put a couple of little reference marks. I want the U zipper where I want the U zipper to go. I just want something like that. Now, once we do one side in the shop with the pattern, we'll duplicate it on the other side so that they're both the same. And that's it. Rip it off. All right, so actually you're, you only missed about three minutes there. I'm literally working here at my marina today. So I just walked into the shop and got the R3 patterns and we'll just get two of them out of the way and start fitting in the patterns. Okay, so you can see this. We have the top where the awning rail is, the bottom at the snap line, our marks on all four corners where we want our cutoffs. So this is just a matter of drawing lines. From mark to mark. <laughs>
I don't know why it's called Mark. I don't know why it's not called Phil. Same thing there on the aft side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check to see how straight that Sometimes with these T-tops, the awning rail can actually be curved a bit, you know, because it got bent or something with, you know, you never know where those pieces go. So I always check the reference. I never make sure, I never just rely on it being absolutely straight. And if it's not straight, you make the panel not straight. You make it exactly the way you marked it out. But because I was freehanding, you know, I'll, I'll just straighten my line up with a, with a straight edge, with a ruler. Now here at the bottom side, where we came on the inside of the boat and put these two snaps, put some straight edges. At this point, I'm just going to cut the excess of this plastic away. I'm not actually going to cut it on my line. Just to make it smaller so it's more manageable. All right, that's it. Now we've got the entire perimeter marked out. Let's do the other two pieces. All right, I'm going to flip this over. I always like to work it where I can see it. Just makes so that the inside's showing up. Side. Come over and mark our cut off on the inside or the front side. Check our really see yeah this side over here is straight. The top of this awning rail was really straight. That other one was not. It had a curve in it. excess plastic. Process. If you have all the, if you have all the marks on the, on the clear or on the, this plastic that you do on your boat, it's very simple. Now I know that this isn't going to be straight up here at the top because there's a radius on that T-top itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of straighten my crooked scribbling out. And then remember when I said this is going to be marked into two panels. We'll split it right through the center. Alright, 
um, I just had to take a little break for a second because I realized that I had made a mistake on this. I actually went back out to the boat and checked. Uh, this is the port side curtain and the front curtain. And what I've done is just to, just to verify or check myself, I took these two pieces and lined them up where the cutoff lines are. And they are exactly, they line up exactly. So the length from both pieces on the vertical zipper is exactly right. But what I did over here, is I noticed that when I lined these up, I was three quarters, three quarters of an inch off. And whenever anything like that happens, you have to go, whoa, something is wrong. Something's absolutely wrong. So what I did was I went back, I went back to the boat, and I lined this edge up, and I lined this edge up back to where the cutoff marks, where the marks on the boat were. And I, and I realized that the front curtain was done right, but what I didn't do was, there's a, there's a mark, There's a mark right here. You probably can't see it on the camera, but there's my dot is all the way inside here. And I'm going to use a different colored Sharpie because I've made a mistake. I'm going to cut a different, I'm going to draw different lines in with a different color Sharpie now to, to identify to myself that the green is now the good one. The black is not, no longer existing. But there's a mark here that I marked but I, what I didn't do when I was on the boat was circle that mark so I can see it. Well, I must have tapped the clear panel with my China mark or my Sharpie and put a different mark on the clear. So it wasn't, it wasn't you know, identified to me, which I drew out the, the, the wrong one. That's one of the good things about doing this stuff out of plastic is you can change it. So now, now that I've got that little mark identified, and when I line these panels up, from the mark to the mark, I can see that it is it's dead on, accurate. So now I've got to change this panel. So from up here at the top, where I know it's right, down here to this new mark, with my green Sharpie, I'm going to put a new cutoff mark on there. And then same thing, same thing here on the bottom edge. Okay, now can you see that? Where this line, this line, and this line were wrong. So now that I have them right, if I take this, if I take the center panel, making certain that I have the inside up here and the inside up here, if I line these two pieces up, That's exactly right. Line straight up. <clears throat> so now you can even go over and just mark out with your green, you know, so you know it's it's easy to cut it off wrong when you transfer this to the plastic. Okay, now, all right, that's once that's that's done. Next thing we need to do is. And I'm going to go ahead and continue to use this green Sharpie now that I've already made changes because I know that that's my, my good mark now. I need, to, I need to figure out where I want to put the canvas down here at the bottom. So there's a, there, this little tail piece will be canvas and the top of it's going to be clear. And here is a mark that, I, that was put on the boat that's flat on the gunnel, which it's a good reference for it being straight off. <clears throat> Alright, now we have that fixed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take down here at the bottom edge. I want the canvas to be two inches from the clear. So I'll draw a line where I'll sew the canvas on. And remember that we're going to, we're going to add one inch of fabric that overlaps the clear. So I actually am going to get a three inch piece of fabric showing at the bottom edges. So the clear will be one inch longer than that, make it two inches. And then 
here at the bottom where we're going to sew this tail on with fabric. We'll draw another line at the, at the same two inch mark. So as you can see now, the top here is where the clear will actually be cut and the bottom is where the, the um, fabric will be. So we'll sew one piece on through this way and then we'll take another piece and sew it on through the top and that will make this, this shape here at the bottom edge. So let's make, let's draw those same lines out. On the port side. Anytime you can get, get away with cutting the clear off straight at the bottom, it makes putting the fabric on a lot easier. So the other thing you can do now at this point is you can put you can sandwich these two pieces together. And you know they're not going to be exact because they're two different sides, but you can get a reference. So yeah, that's that's pretty much exact about exactly the same. Just to check yourself, make sure that you're not making a mistake anywhere. Alright, so there we're ready to uh, transfer the pattern onto our clear pieces and then uh, get, them, get them cut out and start sewing fabric on it. Alright, so now what you see I have here is I've got my sheet of clear, which it only comes so wide, the, the Stradglass does. And I have um, one piece the port side underneath here where I want it to go. And what I've done is I've taken these other two pieces and I'm just nesting them on to make sure that I have enough clear vinyl to, to cut these out. So I can cut both the two pieces and half of the front curtain out of this one sheet of clear. So <clears throat> here what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just do it, do it quickly because we're kind of on a time frame. I'm going to mark this one mark out. And then I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut this off. Right, scissors. Roughly just to get it out of the way so I have enough of the, the, the fabric here. Get that out of the way. All right. Now that we have enough clear on there, We can mark all the way around this one. this entire thing out.
Okay. I'm flipping this over because I want the inside. I had to I had to flip the two pieces over to get them to nest together to get it all cut out over one sheet. So that panel's done. Move this out of the way. Uh, the good news here is that this is uh, this is going to cut the front curtain is going to be cut into two different pieces, so we can scribe it into two different pieces. But one thing that I always want to do once I separate this is I'm going to put port and starboard on your on the inside so that I don't get these things confused. This is the inside port. I can also go ahead and separate this pack pattern. Because if you're paying attention, I, I don't like to slide the clear on the table itself. We want to slide it around on the plastic. So from another job, I had this extra piece, which I always like to keep. And it makes for enough.
<laughs> so I'm going to just get right into this. We're going to go ahead and put two U zips on here. So a mark two inches in, with the exception of this angle here. I don't want this angle in the horseshoe zipper. So I'm going to come over here and square this off. Take my compass. Round that off. Doing the same thing here. Two inches up from the bottom. Squared off the center zipper. So we're ready to go for our zippers. We'll do the same thing. I'll use my T-square at the top edge, come in a couple inches from the edge, square that off, same thing over here, I'm going to come a couple inches from the edge, square that off, and then draw a line down here at the bottom edge, two inches up. Now we can measure out our 16 inch mark for a good 16 inch radius. All right, now that we've got all four of the U-zips marked out, um, I'm going to go ahead and just let the camera run, and I'm going to go ahead and tape the zippers on all of these windows at one time, and then I'll stitch them all at one time. It's kind of a time-saving thing for me, um, considering that I'm trying to get this boat done all in one day. So just stay with me I'm not going to talk a lot I'm going to go through it you've seen how we do this we take you know we take the outside on the clear and then we take the inside on the the chain zipper itself and then stick both sides down and then we'll stitch it out and cut it out use the eighth inch strapping tape for this. I'm going to measure out roughly about what I need, leaving a couple of inches <clears throat> extra, and then flip the zipper over and put a piece of the strapping tape on the one edge of the zipper.
Okay, here we go. These cosmos have a very high tension rate on them, so if you're not holding those threads down exactly right, they'll definitely pop through your hands. these things off and bind this zipper window um, the same as I just did to do them all at one time so at this point what we want to do like you've seen with the edge of these zippers we want to make sure that we know which which tooth sticks out the furthest so that when we separate this thing we can get it back together exactly the way it came out I'm cutting off in between the teeth and the bottom stitch line. You bring that over to the machine and then zip it on. zippers so they're flush with the canvas at the top and you can see that we have the the binding in there and the zippers zip back on it um, so what I'll do is flip it over on the on the good side and then take a piece of one and a I'm sorry two inch <clears throat> facing Stick this on so it's right even with the top edge. 
And once you've got it like that, you flip it over. And here I've got, what I've done is I've taken three inch fabric with a one inch fold in it. And we'll stitch all the way through the zipper and the clear. And everything so you're finished on the inside and the outside. Just line it up. Now we can come back over here. And trim. Both sides and then also come inside here and cut about one inch of clear the zipper and everything off. Now that will be ready to uh, to bind. So now I'm going to flip. I'm going to flip this out so that I've got the good side of this exposed. And I'm going to take my one and a half inch facing. And this time just stitch it right on the outside.
do is I'm going to line my material up here so that I make sure I have enough fabric and then put my pattern down with my clear underneath. So just to make sure that I have enough canvas there to, um, to cut out enough on there. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and scribe in a line. Now the reason why we're doing this with the inside towards us is so we could fold the fabric over and stitch it on and you won't see the, any markings. Like I've told you before, we never want to mark on the outside of anything so there's no lines on there. So <clears throat> I'm going to put a, just a reference mark on both ends where this stop. Now then I'll take my, my two inch ruler. So I want to fold over one complete inch on this thing. <coughs> Cut that out exactly two inches bigger than you need. Now we know that on this corner right here, we don't want, we want it one inch. Or basically, put a mark at one inch if you got two inches there. So you can put just a little bit of a relief cut in that. Now again, we'll take our, we'll take our stick pin here and fold this over and just crease this fabric. Right on that one inch, start the two inch line. So you have one inch above. Alright. side towards us there. Alright, see how we want this to go so that this is folded over and on the good side of this. So you can flip this over the top of it and then put your Take your strapping tape and tape down right on the edge of the clear itself. <clears throat> okay, now using, using the reference line that we put on right there, I'm going to go ahead and transfer that right through this so I can see where it goes. Start lining it up in the exact right spot there. Now I can just stick this down to the tape right on the right on the edge there. It doesn't go exactly right there. Now here is where it takes a little bit of finagling whenever you have a, a corner like that. Go ahead and, and flip this over. Be careful that you're not pulling it off of there. And then fold this edge over. And you have to sort of look underneath there. There we go. So you get that on there absolutely nice and nice and flat, okay? So gently flip this back over. Take it to the take it to the machine. Right. Now we'll take a piece of our 
three quarter inch binding. I'll roll this up to get it so that I can sew with it. All right, it's on there real nice. Now we'll take a piece of our three quarter inch binding and we'll do the same thing we did. Lining up the outside edge here. I'm just giving this one good stitch line. Now that we've done that, take our scissors and do the same thing again. Reach up inside this, in between that binding, and cut this excess right here off. Now we can go back and stitch on the bottom edge of our binding. and flat. This time I'm going to come back to my pattern and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trim. I got to get the to it. I'm going to go ahead and cut the plastic out exactly on the line. cut off. Now we can come back and describe and we can transfer these marks. Up. 
Now we have that shape exactly like our pattern. And, um, you know, because this is a snap line here, we can put some reinforcing down here where these two snaps on, reinforce that, and then uh, just go back and we'll bind because every, everything's done now. Um, we'll just bind all the way around all the panels and then we'll be ready to sew the ketter welting on the top and then our zippers where our front curtain meets our side curtain. And after that, we'll be ready to go put it on the boat. We've got everything bound. Now we're getting ready to sew these zippers on here. And what I'm doing is I've just cut off the proper length of these zippers and I'm putting the, the little stops so that the slider doesn't come off the bottom of the zipper. All right, now we'll just start with this one. This is the starboard side. Once again, making certain that you're putting the zippers on the inside of the panel so they don't get shown from the outside. First thing there is, is the, the, the three panels, or I'm sorry, the two panels in the front We'll sew all three zippers to those and then take the two sides off and stitch them onto the side curtains once we've got that. Now, if you've watched other lessons, you'll see this again. Um, the top with the slider or the spear part that goes into the slider at the top, that's the top of the zipper. And of course, the bottom is the bottom. So the top of the panel and the bottom of the panel corresponds with the top of the zipper and the bottom of the zipper. So anytime I'm going to start sewing at the top of the panel, I use the slide. So consequently, the, the, this other side of the port piece, when we start sewing at the bottom, we'll have the spear in our hand. It's just a way to keep it so you don't get confused. And it's always the same. So if you have, for example, this side, this is the top of the panel, this is the bottom of the panel. When I take my zipper, if I was sewing the bottom, or I'm sorry, the top of the zipper on the bottom, you know that something would be wrong. And also, I would also know that if I was sewing at the bottom and I had the slide in my hand, that that would also be wrong. Because whenever you start at the bottom, you start with a spear. Whenever you start at the top, you start with a slide. So having the spear in my hand, I'm starting at the bottom. Ran out of thread.
Here's one thing that I like to do. I like to line these up so that they're exactly right. And then I'll put a little mark at the top where the slide goes so that I'm making certain that I'm sewing these things down so that the edges of the panels line up. First part of that, obviously, there was no sound. So you just gotta watch me go through the motions with it. Um, I'm not gonna redo it. So you're just gonna have to watch it without sound. I'll repeat what I'm doing here again so that you can see. What I did was I marked, put a mark on the top of this panel so that I know the right, correct length of the zipper so that those panels will line up with each other. trying to explain the top of the zipper and the bottom of the zipper. You start at the... Alright, now that we have the zippers on here, we want to just sew this caterwaul on um, so that the uh, part that slides into the tracking that's on the boat sticks out on top of the, the fabric. Remember how we scribed that when we scribed that line? to go slow when you sew this stuff. Um, it's Kevlar. It's very strong. Not that a lighter sewing machine won't go through it. Um, it's just that the thread likes to break when you sew it because it's so hard. So stitch it, stitch it slowly. That's it. That's all the sewing that's done. I'm going to uh, take my plexus and my um, rag and I'm going to clean these things up, get my fingerprints off of them, wash the marks off of them, and then I'll see you at the boat. We'll put these things on. Alright, that's it. All done. And on there. Nice U zips on the sides. Looks like a new boat.